terrible things started happening when you walked away. So that's why I stay right here. Cause when all of my dreams everybody so i hope you're well and having the most incredible day as always welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are doing well i have had my kindle for over a year now and i think now is the perfect time for me to share with you my pros cons kindle unlimited recommendations i just feel i've had it for such a long time now such a long time that I feel like I can give you all of this information and be really confident with my answers. So in today's video, essentially, I'm going to be giving you all the information you need to know before buying a Kindle. I am so excited for this video. So let's dive in. I hope you enjoy and carry on watching. So before we dive into the pros, the cons and all that kind of stuff, I do just want to quickly point out that if you decide to get yourself a Kindle, it doesn't mean that has to be your one stop shop at reading books. Personally, I am a physical copy girly, a Kindle girly and an audiobook kind of person. I love them all and I sometimes do read the same book in different formats or I'll listen to one book, read a different one at a set like the same time but not at the same time if you know what I mean. I just love all formats of reading so I just want you to know that you know if you're gonna buy a Kindle it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't go out and buy a paperback. Anyway, let's dive into the pros and cons. I have a lot to share with you, so let's dive in. So a little bit of background on the Kindle I have. I have the Kindle Paperwhite 6.8, which I absolutely love. You can buy a slightly smaller one. However, I personally just didn't want to go for the smaller screen. I feel like the smaller one was too similar to my phone screen and I wanted something a little bit bigger. And I'm so glad I did because it is so easy to read. Obviously you've got basic things like the brightness can go up and down and the font can get bigger and smaller to also aid your reading and Kind of make you the most comfortable but I personally think that this size screen was perfect and I would highly recommend it if you're wanting to get a Kindle but you can't decide on what size definitely go for the bigger option I just think it's just so much more convenient it's so much more easy to read and also it still fits in a handbag perfectly so it's kind of a win-win price wise for this Kindle I have just had a little look online I know I did get this one for Christmas last year and I also bought my mum one for Christmas this year and I think I paid maybe a hundred pounds this year because I did get it when it was on a deal and I think it was like £30 off or something. However, looking at the prices now, you can get a Kindle Paperwhite 6.8 from Curry's with 16 gigabytes of storage and that is £150. I do think these have gone up a little bit over time. However, you can also get them on Amazon. Obviously, it does just depend on what size storage you want and which Kindle you actually want to go for in terms of price, but I would say they do sort of range anywhere from maybe £130 to £180 depending on which one you want to go for. Now, if you are considering getting a Kindle, I would highly, highly recommend getting yourself Kindle Unlimited. I pay £10 a month for Kindle Unlimited and you basically get as many downloads as you want of the unlimited books, but you also have obviously the ability to buy all the books you want to buy as well. Now, on a Kindle, you can download up to 20 books, which are free. However, you can download as many as you want up to your storage allows of the ones you purchase so if you want to buy books on kindle unlimited you can have you know hundreds and thousands and all that kind of stuff however if you just get the free ones you are only able to download 20 however i don't find that an issue whatsoever because what i essentially do is i'll download a book that's free once i've read it i'll just remove the download so i don't necessarily clog up my storage on my kindle with books i haven't read yet obviously you can do that you can go and buy as many books as you want and have them kind of in your library ready to go but for me when i do the unlimited ones I tend to not download too many at once so that I can just chop and change whenever I want. I don't find it an issue. I'm not the sort of person that would want to keep it on my Kindle if I've downloaded it for free because obviously if you want to reread it, you can just download it again. It's no big deal and it just means that you have the kind of the option to chip and change. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, that is kind of my thoughts on that. You definitely need to get Kindle Unlimited. It is so, so good and it just allows you to read basically whatever you want. Now, let's dive into the pros and cons before I go through a little list I've made of all the Kindle Unlimited book recommendations I've got. So let's start off with the pros because I personally feel like there are so many more pros than cons of having a Kindle. So pros for me firstly is the size and the kind of convenience of having one. So firstly it's super thin, super lightweight. So if you're going on holiday, you're traveling, you don't need to put in massive amount of books in your suitcase, in your hand luggage, in your handbag. It's just not necessary. I can have you know up to 20 free books and thousands of actual paid books on here and literally just take this. 
so anytime I'm going to travel or go on holiday in this next year this is going to be coming with me and I'm so so excited with the convenience of it that I just think it's just such an amazing pro of having a Kindle. Another pro of having a Kindle is the battery life. Now obviously this wouldn't happen if you were reading a physical book. Your battery's not going to run out or anything like that but the battery life on a Kindle I think is anywhere up to two weeks battery life on a full charge. It lasts for such a long time. It is so convenient. I mean if you were going to go on holiday for a week's holiday you don't even have to take the charger. I mean I would just in case but you wouldn't have to and I love that feature because having to charge this all the time would be really inconvenient especially when you're traveling but the fact it lasts for so long is just so incredible and it's just such a cool feature to know about because I think that if you didn't know it lasts that long you might be thinking oh charging it's going to be annoying but I've never had an issue where I'm reading this out and about and I've like lost battery so I'm highly just impressed about the battery life of this. Another pro of getting a Kindle for me is the prices of books. Now honestly I'm not gonna lie to you guys, you know me, I buy a crap ton of books. I love having physical copies, I love my bookshelves being really full and just I just really love that. It's a hobby, I love buying books. However if you're the sort of person that is not bothered about having physical copies and you literally just want to read just to read and then have no clutter around the house, these are brilliant and also the pricing of books does vary to the physical copies. For example I know some books on the Kindle Unlimited app are either free or they're around 2 dollars Instead of spending about 9 or £10 on a book, you can literally buy one for about £3. So it is a good money saver in that sense. I do know that some books that you can buy on an e-reader isn't that much different to buying a physical copy. I know for a fact that I bought Akawar, I think, on Kindle, which I originally said I wasn't going to buy any books I'd already booked. But wait, hang on, that wasn't English. I wasn't going to buy any books I'd already bought on Kindle. So I was only going to read them on my Kindle if they were free. But Akawar is absolutely massive. And I bought it for, I think, £4.99, which I think I bought the actual book for maybe six or seven pounds from the works months ago. So it wasn't much different. So that wasn't really a bargain. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. But other than that, I think it's such a good way of reading and not spending as much money as you would going into like Waterstones and buying an absolute mammoth amount of physical copies. So you do save a lot of money when you're reading on Kindle. And another pro I just want to touch on is just more the convenience of it at night time and when you're lounging about. So I love the fact with the Kindle, I can lie down and read it and be comfortable. When you're holding a physical book and like trying to lie down, it is the most uncomfortable way of reading. You get hand cramp. It is just not a vibe. The lighting also adjusts kind of with your surroundings, I guess if that makes sense. So you know how when you're on your phone and the sun comes out the brightness just automatically goes up this does the same thing so it's so convenient to read at night time or if you're kind of in like in the living room and you're watching tv at the same time which I do on the regular I love having the tv on and reading my kindle don't ask me why I just love it so this does adjust with the lighting of the room you're in and I absolutely love that feature it is just so convenient and it just makes the the reading part of it just so much easier and enjoyable so now moving on to a few cons of having a kindle to be honest with you guys I don't think there is many I love having a Kindle so much that the cons kind of just get overlooked and I don't even think about it. So the only few I can think of is one, if you're like me and you buy a book on Kindle, you'll probably buy it in paperback anyway. That is the person I am. That is simply on me and my fault in being obsessed with books that I will buy a book twice. So that is sort of a con, but it is all on me. Another con of a Kindle for me is that this is not a lifelong item. This is not going to last me forever and I will have to replace it over time. I believe the average lifespan of a Kindle, I think, is about five to eight years so it's not that it's gonna die anytime soon touch wood I have known people's to kind of break and go wrong over a year which obviously is not good but when you buy a physical copy of a book that is gonna last you a lifetime unless anything goes wrong touch wood doesn't happen but you know what I mean you're gonna have those books forever whereas this will not last you forever so it is one of those things I find that that is the only con in my opinion that I can think of that would really kind of make me consider a Kindle is that this will not last you a lifetime and they are you know one to two hundred pounds however However, the speed I can read books on this, so worth it. So I do overlook that a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. So now let's dive on to the Kindle Unlimited recommendations. This isn't gonna be in too much detail. I have a list on my phone of Kindle recommendations that I have personally read and adored. And then I have a few recommendations that I've heard so many good 
things about that I am definitely going to be reading and downloading on my Kindle. So I have kind of a two-part situation here of books I've loved and books that are well loved and I'm going to share them with you. So let's dive into the books that I have personally read and fallen in love with and are all completely free on Kindle Unlimited. So the first two books are The Housemaid and The Housemaid Secret by Frieda McFadden. I am pretty sure that 99.9% .9 of Frieda McFadden's books are on Kindle Unlimited so if you love a good thriller like me then you definitely need to give her books a go. I absolutely loved The Housemaid and The Housemaid Secret. My mum in fact has actually read quite a bit of The Housemaid. She is one of those people that really wants to get into reading and she'll read a page and get distracted. However, since buying her a Kindle and reading The Housemaid, she is flying through it. And I am so impressed. So yeah, if you want a good thriller, something that will kind of hook you from the get-go, The Housemaid and The Housemaid Secret are just so good. Next up, we have the Dreamland Billionaire series. This is a series I am currently finishing off. I am on the third and final book. I cannot recommend this series enough. I absolutely love this series with my whole heart. It is so good. Essentially, it's about three brothers so each book kind of focuses on one of the brothers and there is a love interest and they basically have an inheritance they're trying to get hold of but they have to complete complete a few things first so it is such a good series it's very disney meets spicy book i absolutely love this series and as i said they're all on kindle unlimited they are just so good and they're all by lauren asher whose books i absolutely adore so highly recommend these books so good and as i said i'm reading the third one at the moment i can see this being a five star it is just so good and yeah highly recommend it just adore it then we have the twisted series this series in my opinion is very marmite I know a lot of people who love this series and I know a lot of people that hate this series. I personally adore it. I think it's so good and essentially a brief synopsis is about four friends. Each book focuses on one of those friends and it's a very spicy kind of romance book but there's a lot of things going on in between. I just really enjoyed this series and I cannot recommend it enough. As I said it, they are very spicy. If you don't like a spice don't read these books but they are really good. I thoroughly enjoy them and those are by Anna Huang. I don't know if I mentioned that but I do really like her writing again. I absolutely adore that series. I've just realised a lot of my recommendations are series. I'm a series girl. I love a good series. I love diving into multiple books within the same universe. It really just captivates me and I love it. So the next series I'd highly recommend is the Never After series by Emily McIntyre. I love Emily McIntyre's writing with my whole heart. She is just so incredible at a spicy romance. I absolutely love it. Her books are definitely on the darker romance side. They are inspired by Disney as well. So they're not retellings. She makes it very clear that they are not retellings but they are definitely inspired by Disney films and I really really enjoyed this series. These are books you can read in any order, they are kind of standalone, they're not really interconnected at all actually, they're just part of a series so you can read them in any order, none of them intellect like intertwine at all and I just really really recommend them. Hooked I think was my favourite but I did really love Crossed and Twi I love them all. It's really hard to pick my favourite but Hooked was so good. It was the first one I read and I think I read the first three books of that series within like the first four days of last year so yeah absolutely loved it. We then have the Knock em Out series by Lucy Score. Now granted I've only read book one but I fell in love with this series. Honestly it is so so good and the fact it's on Kindle Unlimited is very convenient because because each book is probably about 500 pages and I just find that holding a fat book very daunting, very stressful. I'm trying not to break the spine when I'm reading it and it becomes more of a distract, like a distraction than anything else. So that kind of aspect of it really puts me off. But having it on a Kindle, you think, oh, a 500 page book, it's tiny. Like I don't need to even worry about it because it's like this size. So I really love the Knock em Out series. I don't want to say too much about what it's about, but it's basically a small town, a spicy romance with so much going on in the background that it just is just such a good book. I flew through it. I loved it. The next series, which I highly recommend, is the Dirty Air series by Lauren Asher. This is a Formula One meets romance series. It doesn't focus on Formula One that much, so it's not too much to understand, if you know what I mean. But each character basically from the Formula One scene has their own book and it's about their love interest and it's just so, so good. I really recommend it. Again, these are very spicy. These are kind of very easy to read. I just really, really enjoyed those. And the last book which I have read myself is A Merry Little Meet Cute by Sierra Simone and Julie Murphy. Now I'm not going to lie to you, this book is definitely more on the Christmas spectrum, but it is so, so good. It's so like fluffy to read. It is very spicy, but it's so lighthearted, so fun. So I just wanted to pop that one in at the end because I just enjoyed it so much when I read it in December that I really recommend it if you guys want to read it but it is spicy. Pre-warning a lot of the books I have just listed are spicy but that is what I'm into so yeah. And 
a quick fire round of a few recommendations that I have got from other people that I personally haven't read. We have the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. This series has been on my TBR for ages. I really want to read it in bulk, just get through the whole thing. But I'm really scared because I just know I'm going to be obsessed with it. And when I finish it, I'm going to be gutted. So that is the first one. We then have the Magnolia Park series, which again has been an absolute famous series to read on TikTok and on YouTube. Everybody loves this series. I cannot wait to dive into it personally. Apparently it's very kind of gossip girl meets like London. I cannot wait to read it. I'm very excited about that one. Then we have the Brutal Birthright series by Sophie Lark. Again, this is another series which is spicy. It's a kind of mafia romance, dark romance kind of vibe. I'm really excited to dive into that one. We then have the Lancaster Prep series, which is by Monica Murphy. Again, loads of books in the series. I really want to get into this one, but there are just so many books in the series. It's quite daunting. I'm not going to lie, but and each book is massive. So I am really looking forward to getting into that, but I am a little bit scared. Then basically any Rena Kent book. I have heard so many good things about Rena Kent that I really want to dive into her universe. I want to kind of read it all in order though. So I need to find a way of finding the list of it all in order and just kind of going from start to finish. But I have heard nothing but good things about Rena Kent. The next series, which has been highly recommended is the Addicted series by Krista and Becca Ritchie. I have heard nothing but good things about this series. Honestly, I feel like this series has taken the world by storm and I still haven't read it. So that is another one on Kindle Unlimited that I must read ASAP. And the last one I want to recommend is Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. This is a book which I have heard nothing but good things about and it came out ages ago and I still haven't read it yet. So this is another one on Kindle Unlimited that I want to pick up. I want to read it and I'm just going to have to do it in 2024 because I've heard nothing but good things. So those are all my Kindle recommendations. I feel like that was a massively long list. All very similar in terms of genre but these are just books that I would recommend that I know that I will love and if you like books that I like hopefully you will like them too. So that is everything for this video. I really hope you guys did enjoy and please please leave me a comment down below of any Kindle Unlimited books that you would recommend for me to read because I would love to know and I would love for you all to have like a conversation in the comments of books that you've read on there that you've absolutely fallen in love with or even books you didn't like. I would love to know down below so yeah let me know down below I would really appreciate it. If you haven't already please subscribe. I upload twice a week on this channel. We do a lot of book content, a lot of lush content and vlogs in between and yeah thank you so so much for watching. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. Things started happening when you walked away. So that's why I stay right here.